Shalawah to all my Israelite brothers and sisters. Those that are near, those that are far off. Don't look like I got no friends list. This is a new Facebook. Yeah. Uh, I ain't made no, made no videos in a while. I ain't got nothing on here. Okay. No invite button, no nothing. Shalom, all my Israelite brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Ah, uh, my brothers and sisters, it's good to see y'all chiming in. I'm waiting on one of our young kings to uh, come on in a minute. There is Twitter where do you got a camera down there? Do you got to invite? I mean, um, something to where you can, uh, it should be something down there. This is some type of new Facebook on mine, and it ain't got nothing but, um, hold on, let me see. Maybe I got the invite. Let's see here. Let's see if I got you Twitter where. Okay, I got everybody else on there. Tweet where I'm adding you. Ah, uh, bring tweet where I'm at. Shalom, everybody. Y'all notice I ain't been on Facebook here lately. And for good reason. One reason is that now that it's springtime, I've been busy. I've been back kind of working, so. And then the other reason is that, for one, I got tired of Facebook stopping, messing up the videos every time you start talking about something they don't want here. So I start making them on YouTube. And then for two, I ain't been on Facebook because some things I just don't even want to look at. My cousin once taught me a while. Some things you see, you don't see. Some things you hear. See, that's why I'm on Facebook, because it just break in whenever we get ready. So some things you see, you don't see. Some things you hear, you don't hear. And honestly, I truly know the things that we see on Facebook, we really wouldn't even want to see. Some of the things uh, that we're hearing on Facebook and social media, you really don't particularly keep to hear. Break your heart when you see certain things. Shout out to young king. Shalom, how you doing? I'm doing good, boy. That beard is spilling on out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm trying to get like you. <laughs> <laughs> For those of y'all that don't know, that's that's Twidware. That's Brother BB. I also Shalom, know everybody. his company is Twidware. Twidware clothing. Y'all see his advertisement and everything. Hey, man, what's the hold up on my, when am I going to get my hat? Oh, um, I'm waiting on that shipment right now. Oh, that hat with the can opener on it, boys. Yeah, I, I got a rodeo, you know what I'm saying? I got a rodeo next month, so, you know what I'm saying, they shipping it. It should be here within the oh, next week. Oh, that's right, because you did have a cowboy hat, too. That's the hat that I like. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I like yes, it them all, you know what I mean? <laughs> Shalom King Richard. That's my brother-in-law, Papa Willow. The Godfather, Dale Willis. Yeah, so basically that's what we was we were chopping up earlier about our brothers out here, man, with that brotherhood thing, you know. And uh, it's a sick, twisted thing to think, boy, that any of us gonna serve the Most High when we can't find a way to get along with each other. That just ain't gonna happen. It just ain't gonna nah. happen. Nah. You know, it ain't gonna happen. It just ain't gonna happen. Nah. No. Yeah. So, so, oh, uh, so, uh, just for me to breathe on your brothers and sisters and tell them what you think about that. All right. Well, Elder, I just think that, uh, you know, the word says, "Let brotherly love continue." Um, and you know, what I'm saying personally, I just think it has a lot to do with the man. It has a lot to do with, um, you know, uh, taking your position. You know, I feel like, um. 
I feel like married men, you know what I'm saying, pretty much set the guideline for um, the nation of people. You know what I'm saying? When you're a married man, you know, you, you, you pretty much understand priority. When you're a mar married, I got a, I've been married for about 10 years. I got a eight month old. I got a, um, a six year old daughter. And my first priority, my most important priority is my home front. You Get a little so louder. Means, okay. Get let me a little see. louder. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can my, hear you. I just need you to be a little bit louder. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I'm from the country, so I can do that. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me, Elder? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I hear you. So, okay. So, um, I think first priority, you know what I'm saying, for the man, the married man, and I'm talking about the married man because most married men, you know what I'm saying, I give everybody benefit of the doubt as a married man. Most married men, you know what I'm saying, who's taking care of their responsibilities, you understand you got to focus on what's in your house, what's going on in your house, and forget about the rest of the outside world. You don't have time for that. I've been married eight years, you know what I'm saying, I got two kids. My first priority, pay bills. I got a notifi notification today, you know what I'm saying, it's time for me to pay my electric bill. I ain't got time to be worrying about what's happening with this other brother. I don't have that time. You know what I'm saying? And when you focus on working about that and working about what's happening on in your own house, it's going to make you respect everybody else's business, first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be so focused on being emotional as to what's happening on happening in the rest of the world because you got your own set of priorities to deal with. You know, and so that's just how I see things in terms of, you know, what's going on in terms, especially during this awakening of Israel. You got a lot of men... And you know what I'm saying? When I was coming up, it was only one type of man to be a man's man. Take care of your business. You take care of your business. Don't worry about what's happening with everybody else's business. You right. know? And so I just think, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we have a sense of understanding when it comes to, you know, uh, being a man, what a man is. And a lot of that just has to do with the broken home. I, I wasn't raised yeah. with my father in my life. Simple as that. I wasn't. Um, you know, statistically, like I was talking to you earlier, it's 28% of black women are getting married. Only 28%. Another 78% that have kids, they're having kids, you know what I'm saying, by single parents. So you do the math, that's a recipe for a destruction. Because the family is broken. Yeah, but you know, a lot of uh, a lot of times our brothers... See, in order for them things to happen, our brothers had to put on brakes and take a real good look. You see, they had to take a real good look. Because, well, you know what? And I'm saying that this walk right here, it ain't about no sensitivity neither. You know? That's and true. You know what? The way we was raised coming up in the hood, you know what? If you was going to grow up and be a man, you was going to have to have, you was gonna have, to have some, some tough skin. If, That's true. We always tell people to say what they want. Just don't put your hands on me. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm too preoccupied with my business to be distracted by anything that anybody else is doing. And so that's just, that seemed to be one of the things that got many of our brothers sidetracked. I had one of my brothers, one of our brothers on uh, YouTube that asked a question on one of the videos. He says, uh, Elder, what I can't understand is how how people still keep using the word Jesus and think that that's all right and this is that the other. <laughs> I simply told him, I said, because you know what? The scripture says through stammering lips and a foreign speech, the most high will speak to his people. You see? And I'm saying is that just because you learn something new tomorrow, you expect everybody else to be on the same plateau. Well, don't you worry yeah. about what everybody else is doing. You yeah. take the new thing that you have learned and you find a way to put that in your life and you become so preoccupied with that that you don't have time to be looking around at what nobody else is doing because nine out of ten times when we start focusing on what other people are doing, it means that we ain't getting the things done that we should be getting done ourselves. Which True. leads me to another thing. Well, Elder, Elder, let me ask you this. Was he, a, was he married or what was his, what was his uh, you know, uh, situation was he married, single? Or uh, what? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his situation is. The only thing that I know is that 
you can't worry about why everybody else is doing something. Yeah. The only thing that matters is what are you doing? Exactly. And I and you, I pose that question because Yeah, true. And I pose that question because, you know, when you are a man one and you are a married man, you ain't got time, you know what I'm saying, for the silly stuff. You ain't got time to be wasting time. You trying to make ends meet, you know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 happy wife, happy life. I mean, and that's just my experience. So when somebody start coming at me with some trivial type stuff, I look at them in a different way because when I was young, you know what I'm saying, when I was a child, I spoke, thought, and understood as a child. But when I became a man, certain things I just knew, naturally put away. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, 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 it wasn't even hard. It was second nature. So if somebody come at me with something that's not even worth my time, because I'm a man, I'm going to let you have that. Go on about your business. I don't even have time to entertain that. Right. Because my thought right. process is totally different. When I was 21, it be it's different. Okay, well, let's go outside. We go handle this the way we get. I, I had time to be ignorant <coughs> as a young man. Now I'm a man, I don't have that time. And so right. that's, that's why I was asking, was he married? You know what I'm saying? Because when you're married, priorities have to kick in at some point. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself single, alone, and bitter. And you're going to be blaming everybody else well, because you wasn't taking care of well, your we people. We got a lot of brothers. We got a lot of brothers that are married whose marriage is in shambles because they spend so much time in other people's business. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. True. And so, so, so here's the thing. Here's what's really laying at the root of it. That is how women operate. Do you understand exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, many times our brothers don't want to admit that at the root of all these things is fatherlessness. And then we yep. ain't learned how to really become reasonable as it relates exactly. to dealing with our brothers. So we hold True. grudges and we fight and we nitpick and we throw temper tantrums and all these things. But to, to the men that's standing on the outside, we simply say, you know what? Something is wrong with this picture. So I want you, you got your book yeah. with you. I want you to get a scripture. My book? Uh, yeah. Uh, Gigi, go get my other phone. Hurry up. I got my daughter getting my phone. Hurry up. Hurry up. Yeah, hey, but I, I fully agree, Elder. You know. Uh, What's that? I said yeah, I fully see, agree. Is, is we got so many disagreements out here. Every people want to disagree on all sorts of things. You understand what I'm saying? But my thing is that if you disagree, fine. That's your right. Keep going. Yeah. Ain't, yeah. even, ain't even nothing for us to talk about. Ain't even no need of having a conversation. You see? Mm -hmm. Unless unless we got something that we, we try to prove. See, in the street, it could have been that yeah. you just kept it moving. But every now exactly. and then, somebody has something to prove. I want to whoop exactly. him anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, want to, I want to whoop him anyway just because. You know? Exactly. So they stop and go the extra mile to get into a fist fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. When they could have just kept it moving. But... These are the things that have to be Fine. dealt with. That have to be dealt with with the men, with the men or uh, the, the brothers in the community. And and this is not saying nothing bad about none of the brothers because everything is a growing process. Sometimes True. you ever did, you ever did some things that you thought was on point when you did them. Only a five minutes after it was over, you felt like you felt like you was a fool. You see? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You felt like oh, yeah. you was a fool. See, my, oh, thing, yeah. my thing is like, is that oftentimes we get caught up into certain things because of our disagreements. True. See, our disagreements and things like that are really flesh. What we have to stay focused on is what the will of the Father had to say. So won't you pull, exactly. up, first John, uh, pull up First John chapter 4, verse 20. First John yeah, but don't. I'm I'm making a video, so be quiet. Okay. Yeah, first John chapter four, verse twenty. What is first John see, four and twenty? Get our brothers, to understand, brothers, to understand. When we was kids, we didn't always agree on everything, and every now and then we had a fight. But after True. the fight was over, you understand what I'm saying. The differences was reconciled. You True. see. 
Now, let me show you something. When we're talking about me and stuff, when, when me had fights back in the day, like I said, we had a fight, you either whooped me or I whooped you, but it didn't make, make no difference. Whoever got whooped, we both had respect for each other. True. And then we reconciled our differences, and then we just chopped it up. And we went on by. It yeah. was cool. It, and it, all it was through a, life, one of them can still remember. Boy, I remember boy, that nigga beat my ass, boy. We had a fight. Yeah. That nigga, boy, boy, that nigga was a fight True. something. You understand True. what I'm saying? And, it, you know, it, it was, that's just how it is. But we reconciled our differences. Now, yeah. here's the flip side. Now, you take two sisters that have a disagreement <laughs> or they have an argument. Last, last what happened? There years. is no reconciliation. Nah, that's their nah. enemies from that day through all throughout their lives. That's how yep. sisters operate. It is not how men operate. And so what I'm nope. saying to myself is that when we look at some of the things that brothers is getting entangled into, it's fine to have a fight. It's fine to disagree. But the irreconcilable differences cannot be tolerated because you can't serve the father with an irreconcilable difference between your brother when, when forgiveness is there in place. You see? Exactly. True. So read True. what you got. Read what you got. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to challenge some of our brothers out there that have been rubbed the wrong way. Hey, I got hey, I got some of my some of my brothers out there. They like my son. That they felt like they was rubbed the wrong way. And they done ran off. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But that you know what? That causes my heart to ache. Because what yeah. they think or what they feel is not really like that. You understand what I'm True. saying? You're creating an irreconcilable difference. And I know that the most high means for us. That's what Ezekiel 34 chapter is talking about when it says. And my sheep were scattered as though they didn't have a shepherd. And to them yep. that, that ran off, you didn't even go and seek, seek them out or search for them. It is our yep. job as those, those men of the most high. It's our job to go out and seek and search out anybody that felt like they've been True. wounded, like they've been hurt. Get your True. butt back over here. Come on back home. Toughen your True. skin up. Men don't act like that. Pull yourself True. together. You you hampering the will of the most True. high. This is what men do. And this yeah. is what the Father put on us. We ain't living in no situation where we serving the Lord. You can't be no in no buddy buddy system. Yeah. Like, Whose side you on? I'm on this side. I'm on I ain't on nah, nobody's side. Don't work like that. I'm the captain of the Lord, the host army. I'm on the Lord's side. As long as you doing what the most high require, you on my side. We all right. But I don't care yeah. how cool nobody say they are. If you get off the Lord's side and you start going contrary to his will, you can best believe that his world yeah. is coming after you. Yeah. So that's just the bottom line. Yes, yeah, that's, that's we true. we got to find a way to stop having things happen to where it just rip all the life out of us. Read that scripture yeah. you got to read. Read it uh, for them, and then I'm going to come right back, and you can read it again. First, first John 4 and 20. If a man say I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar, for he loveth not his brother whom he How can he love God whom he hath not seen? And uh for me that that's that scripture is pretty simple. Read you it know, again. Um, read it again. Read it again loud and strong. Let me see. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? You see, you see, this is for the men. This is for our brothers. This is for our young kings. Our young kings out there that have good motives, that have genuine hearts, that have good spirits. They've been given good, gifted ability to do great things for the most high, but they have not yet overcome their flesh. They have not yet learned and they have not grown to the point to where they understand that you don't mean nothing on the most high's program. He don't share his glory with nobody. If you say you want to serve the most high, you're going to have to serve the most high in the capacity that he desires to be served. And so he said, you ain't going to run up here and say that you serve me and that you love me when you got a brother right there next to you that you can't stand his guts. He can't stand y'all's guts. And, and all of y'all doing ministry and raising up people yep. and everything. The most yep. I said, I'm not mocked by that. And his spirit yep. is going to and fro through the earth through his word to bring conviction out of love to his brothers 
to his children so that yep. they can do the right thing. You cannot say, if a man say, I love y'all, but he can't walk with his brother, and then forgiving your brother don't mean that you have to walk with him. It don't mean exactly. that y'all have to be running buddies. Yeah. It just means that you release that thing, and then you, yeah. you he's your yeah. brother, and so if you he ever have him. trouble, there's nothing standing in your way to where you can't go and see about yeah. it. True. That's what True. it means. Yeah. And the most yeah. high yeah. saying this is what it is. Because yeah. I hear everything. And some people come and they lay things at the feet of my doorstep. But I don't bother things and I don't tamper with people because ain't none of this stuff personal. But if the exactly. most high give me something that's designed to paint a picture that we can show other brothers and sisters, you understand, how to avoid some of these pitfalls that come from the personal experiences that some of our brothers are having. Because you can look on Facebook and you know what the trip, you know the thing is? It's probably 10 people on this on this streamline that think I'm talking about them. Yeah. We yeah. ain't talking about none of them. Nah. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. Just how the, that's just how the word is. That's just yeah. how the word is. But you can yeah. look on Facebook and you can go down Facebook and you can jump into 10 conversations at any minute and find the same thing what I'm talking about. And everybody's saying that they love y'all. Yeah, true. Yeah. Really? And anytime, anytime a society, which this is what we've come to, anytime a, a society gets to where the men start operating like the women, I mean, it's a bad, it's a, it's a bad place to be. Anytime the men have switched places with the women, and when I say switch places with the women, we ain't necessarily talking about homosexuals or even transgenders. We ain't talking about that. Just from a, a standpoint of you don't know how to control your emotions to the point that you acting out like you done broke character. I was raised, don't as a man, you don't break character. You never break character. You know what I'm saying? That's not your, that's not what you do. So now, you know, you got cats breaking character, acting like women, and it's like, wait a minute, you know, like, you you married? Are you married? You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you acting like your wife, then how she acting? If you acting like your wife supposed to act, how she acting? That's that's my question. So what we're gonna eventually have to do is we're gonna eventually have to get to the root and then we're gonna have to help our brothers to understand. You see, right now we're in the time of reversal. That means everything is going in reverse. That means yeah. that the most high is calling things and see when it comes down to men, we are being called to a place that we ain't never our feet ain't never stood in. Yeah. You see, we ain't never understood what it was like to be men. Because we have True. always been up under women, whether it was our True. mothers or whether it was our wives because of, because of the curses and the situation that we're in. True. But now we've True. been called to come. We've been called to go and stand in a place that we ain't never been in. That's totally True. unfamiliar to us. And because True. we have been raised by our mothers, many things that is happening pertaining to men do not feel comfortable to us. Exactly. Ain't been True. There. But when you start True. understanding, I'm a man and the world don't give a damn about you. If you fall down, the world going to walk right over you. Ain't nobody caring yep. about you. Your feelings don't mean nothing. Don't nobody care nah. what you think. Who cares nah. what you think? Who cares nobody. what your doctrine is? Who cares what you believe? Don't nobody give a dang on rat's butt about what it is that you think. You see? Yep. Because this is the yep. mindset of men. And men only care about one thing. That is getting the will of the Father done. And so when you're going to get the will of the Father done, you got to get the will of the Father done in the manner to which he means for it to get done. And if you yep. don't do it this way, and he got some simplistic principles that yep. are the foundation of getting anything done for him, you can't yep. even begin to do nothing for the Father. Yep. You hey. can't even begin to do nothing for the Son with, with, without going through these simplistic principles. Who this up in Elder, the nowhere in scripture, you know what I'm saying, have I known where the most high cared about how a man was feeling. You see, in, in, in scripture, uh, Moses tells the most high, he said, why don't you send Aaron? Because, you know what I'm saying, I have an awkward tongue. You know, uh, Moses had basically low self-esteem. So he said, why don't you send my brother? He's well-spoken. He can talk. And what the most I say, 
It says, you know what I'm saying, he became angry against Moses because he made him exactly the way he wanted him to be made. So you and your feelings telling me, you know what I'm saying, I should send somebody else. I ain't worrying about your feelings. Either you're going to go stand before Pharaoh or I'm going to destroy you. And it, it says that Moses became very sick and it became, he came, it became oh, very ill. He became very ill. But the most I was saying, you a man, man up. I only need you to say five things. I am that I am. Negro, you finna say this, and I ain't worrying about how you feel about saying it. Just go say it. He ain't worrying about that's how I feel as me. That's He's good. Not worrying about how since I feel. you, yeah, since you said that, since you said that, I want to put a scripture on top of that. Okay. Mhm. Mm All right. I'm gonna put a scripture on top of that. I'm gonna put a scripture on top of that. Uh, go to, go to Hebrews. Fifth chapter. We start reading at the fourteenth verse. Hebrews five and fourteen. Okay. Yeah. And it says, "But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil." I'm gonna read it again, Elder. But. But strong meat belongs to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. All right. Where you at? Now, strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised. Mm. I like okay. that. Now, now, when you start talking about this, you see, we are physical beings. True. And so we are affected. We are affected by our circumstances in the flesh. True. Because True. we are physical. We True. pay attention to what our eyes see. When some things we should see, some things we see, we shouldn't see. And then we pay attention to the things our ears hear. Mm. When, because we are of the flesh and we are sensitive to the flesh, some things we hear that affect us, we shouldn't hear. Mm. See, when I start exercising, strong me belong to them who by reason of use, when I start taking that word and I start understanding and I start using it and I start understanding that my physical senses are affected by the flesh. So sometimes my eyes will show me things, but my spiritual senses, as I work them things out, strong me by reason of use, exercising mm -hmm. the senses so that you can discern when yeah. something physical that you see with your physical eyes can affect you and then your senses in the spirit begin to override those. And even though you see it, you don't see it. And even though you heard it, you didn't hear it. See, yeah. many of our brothers can know the word, but they're not exercising. They're not taking the word and climbing True. up under the word like they climbing up under a dumbbell. Many of our brothers is in the gym. They understand this principle. They go in there, they work out their biceps, their triceps, their triceps, their legs, their abs, their, all of that. You know what? You can go in the gym, Twitter, but you wouldn't get buffed if you never slid up under that, that bench press or never grabbed them dumbbells. <laughs> but this is what some of our brothers is trying to do with the word. They're trying to grab yeah. the word from an informational standpoint, but never go into the gym because exercise comes from the Greek word, uh, 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 rather say gymnasium comes from the Greek word, gymnasu, where we get the mm -hmm. word exercise, strong meat. Word, yeah. the word, the strong word belong to them who by reason of use, using it every day, using it every day. And now those spiritual senses hey. begin to override those physical senses so the just yeah. shall live by faith because hey. strong meat belong to them who by reason of use is exercising and their spiritual senses True. are now overriding their physical senses. This is the condition. Yeah. These are things yeah. that don't just happen. Overnight, no. that's why we're not hard on our brothers about certain things. All of us, you a young man too, Twit, where? So all of us got to go through the same workout process. But I wanted to yeah. throw that in oh, yeah. when you said that God ain't affected by our feelings. 
No, he's not. Because we are fleshly and physical. He is spiritual. He is not yeah. a sensual being. He has never been moved by anything that any of us thought, whether we liked it, whether we, you know what I'm saying? It didn't matter. Yeah. He ain't a sensual being. He don't no. have that to be affected by. But we no. are. But he gives yeah. us a way yeah. that we can be like him. But it comes as we work and start applying those things, you know, applying that word into our life. Our brothers and, is taking and, things too personal and it's causing yeah. too many rips. In, in the in the gym, there's no saying you can't get swole without getting sore. You know what I'm saying? And it, like you were just saying, if you go to the gym, ain't nothing going to happen unless you wake up. When I was working out like I used to, I knew that when I woke up and I was sore, I did something. When I woke up and I wasn't sore, I knew it was basically a waste of time. Hands yeah. down. You, you, know? you want me to tell it, you how your senses get worked out? <laughs> Do you got the, do you got, is you got the apocrypha in your Bible that you use it? Uh, I got it. I got it. Go to Sirach second chapter. Let me show you how you, your senses get, your, 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 how you exercise with the most highest word. If we got it in, the, in there, in the book of Matthew, it tell you, blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. That's what it tell you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. You see, when yep. the father get ready to exercise and put you in the gym, you ain't get putting in the gym by nobody patting you on the back, calling you nah. pastor, calling you nah. Cohen, nah. calling you wonderful nah. teacher. You get in the gym with somebody cussing you out, slandering yep. your name, dragging yep. your name through the mud. He said, yep. that's what makes you blessed because that's what I'm going to keep using to exercise your senses until your spiritual senses start yep. overriding your little emotional fleshly senses. And that's what yep. the biggest problem. We yep. have too many emotional I'm, I'm men there in Israel. Grow up! Get a backbone! Get a spine! Yep. That's, you know, and that's one true. of the things I mean, is because it's because of that that absentee he, thing that is hard to, he, is hard to identify with the fact that yep. I'm in this condition because of something that I was missing. So we yeah, don't put our, true. We put our finger on there, but we're still going to deal with our brothers as it relates to how they're dealing with each other. So get Matthew true. 5 and 23. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hope y'all getting something out of this. Matthew 5, 23. Day, we, we like to walk together as a family. And there are many True. things that will happen as we walk together. See, because the Most High is one, behold, all uh, Israel, the Lord thy God is one, and beside him there is no other. Because the Most High is one, but we, his people, are many. And, yeah. and, and oftentimes in our pursuit of the Most High's righteousness, he only one. But it's billions of us. We tend to bump into each other. Yeah. But we can't go into the kingdom without each other. We can't, can't do go it. into the kingdom with irreconcilable differences. We can't do the work of the most high. You can't even offer, uh, you can't even do a good deed to a homeless man standing outside that's hungry. If you went and bought him some church's chicken and said, may yeah. the most high bless you. Be fool. Don't you understand that the Most High did bless him? But that blessing yep. don't get accredited to your account because he True. can't even accept what you offering if you're not lined up with his He's will. True. Read that scripture, Twit. Matthew 5 and 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother had out against thee, leave there thy gift before thee, before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. I don't care who you are. I love you enough to tell you what God loved. God loved the truth. Don't call me elder if don't nobody want to hear what we got to say. The only reason why anybody call me elder anyway is because of this word, and I'm going to keep using this word. You're not going to tell me that the Most High is accepting what you're offering. No. When you're not lined up. He said, if you come to to offer your gift at the altar. 
Your gift is whatever the Most High have given you, whether it's the ability to rap, whether it's the ability to sing, whether it's the ability to teach, whether you got the gift of helps that you're in administration or, or you feeding the homeless or you sheltering the uh, people or you got putting up things for better women, whatever it is that the Most High have given you as a gift. He said, when you yeah. come to administer that thing to me, he said, when you remember, you see, so mm -hmm. it ain't no way around because it is the job of the Ruach Hakadesh to bring True. all things back to our remembrance. And the Most High love you enough that He want to be able to accept what you offer. He want your gift to be pure. And sometimes we, as the fleshly people, have the capacity to forget things. We might wrong somebody, and then you completely forgot about it. But all praises yep. to the Most High that He grace us and He send His Ruach. That's the Holy Spirit to remind, to bring that thing to your remembrance right before yeah. you offer your gift, right before yeah. you preach your sermon. The Spirit will come up and say, hey, boy, don't you forget True. About yeah. that thing that happened over there. Now, you know what you're trying to offer the Most High. He said, if you go to offer your gift and then you remember because the Spirit brought it back to your remembrance. True. That you have fought against your brother. You are to leave. Hey, don't preach no sermon. Don't sing another rap song. Get out of here. Don't do nothing. Don't even nothing. come talking to me about how good the most high is. And you ain't prepared to drop your gift and go reconcile your difference yep. with your brother. Now, you can take a strong stand if you want to. And you can even yep. blame me for being the one to, bring, to put the word out there. But at the end of the day, it's the most high that said it. Yep. And there's three scenes. If a man curse God, he can be forgiven. If he curse the Messiah, he can be forgiven. But oh, woe to the man. Woe to the man that blasphemed the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes to bring to your remembrance yep. so that that sin can be removed from your life, that it can be repentance and reconciliation can take place. Because reconciliation can't take place between you and the father until reconciliation can take place between you True. and the brother so that the, whatever you need to be forgiven of hey the most high gonna do it as you forgive your brother he said yeah. you ain't gonna you ain't gonna get around this and no. every now and then we get so deep that people don't want to come back and start reminding us of these simplistic principles no i'm gonna put yep. you back on the abc's Mr. I know who Esau is, Mr. Masoretic Tax Man, Mr. Ancient Kimet, and, and, and all of this Nostradamus. Let's, let's yeah. keep it simple. If you go to offer your gift, whatever your gift is, yeah. and the Spirit hey. brings to your remembrance that you got to offer with your brother. That's why you Scripture says, I don't want to Whatever learning. the work is that you are doing. You ain't yeah. to keep on working. I don't care if you had a congregation of people and you prepare the, 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 the Passover lamb. And when the spirit bring that to your remembrance, you're supposed to get out of the room, get away from everybody to celebrate because ain't no need to take the whole establishment and all these people with the stain of your sin while you offer yep. fruitless work to the most high. Yep. You're supposed That's to leave, true. Your, leave your gift and yep. then go reconcile your differences. And I'm hardcore on this. But it don't make me no difference whether people like me or not. I love them either, either way. Yeah. But now yep. listen, I got countless brothers, and I got countless brothers out there. They know who they are. I would never yeah. call nobody by name, and I'll never bring a real accusation against none of my brothers because I love them. I love them all enough to tell them the truth, and I'll tell every last one of them the same thing without favoritism or discrimination. going on? About the, 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 just us having so many problems. Yeah. And then, yeah, El, yeah, you right, El, yeah, you right, El, you right. But nobody never pick up the phone. Nobody, yeah. I ain't, no, I ain't seen nobody leave no gift. And, you know, <laughs> I look around and everybody's still doing what they've been doing. We still yep. gather. We still putting out teachers. We still rapping. We still writing music. We still doing everything. We still doing clubs. We still doing all of the stuff that we've been doing. We still try to offer the most high stuff. We need an already sent his servant to be a reminder in your ear that he's not accepting what you offering until you reconcile your differences with your brother. Let that sit yeah. in. That's true. You know, and it, it's, 
it's sad because elder a lot of our men don't get it like you know what i'm saying we we and i think like you were saying it starts from how we were raised you know what i'm saying and most of us like i said the statistics 78 percent of all of our black women they bring in kids in the world um by their by themselves you know what i'm saying so now it's kind of like you know who's there who's gonna you know what i'm saying be there to, to help you know show this man child how to be a man it just doesn't happen that's why the scripture says proverbs 22 and 6 it didn't say any it says train up a child in the way that they should go well the training comes first from the man the the, the boy my my son gotta know um what it takes to be a man my daughter gotta know you know what i'm saying what type of man to look for that i gotta that's be right. there I, if i'm not there then guess what they're gonna be all over the place you know and so more than likely my son, because he's going to be raised by his mom, if I wasn't there, he'd be raised as, as an emotional man. Yep. And guess, guess what happens with it when you have an emotional man? An emotional man, he gets to a point where he's able to start, you know, having being intimate with a woman, having sex. And because he's raised by his mom, he's expecting this young girl, this young lady to be his mom. She's not your mom. He don't know how to change no tire. He don't really know how to do nothing because the father went missing for whatever reason. So now That's he has so, so so now he has kids and what? What is he finna teach him that he don't have? You see? Yeah. That's what my, it is. My, hey, mama. My my, my, my father wasn't so in my life, but somebody came in and they filled in that gap. You know what I'm saying? And he talked. What's that, Elder? No, uh, uh, Timothy Warren asked a question. He said, so so are you training your kids or are the most high? Well, quite naturally, Timothy Warren, the most high don't do things that he told us to do. He don't do things that he told us to do, but the reality is, is that men have not been properly trained to do anything where manhood is concerned. And the only way we learn how to do those things is when we come back to the scripture. So when you start yeah. to go and start, you you think that you can say, "Whoa, it's me! Whoa, it's me! That brother don't like me. That sister don't. That brother didn't do this. Like they, they didn't pay me no attention. They didn't give me my justice." You think that's something? You go back and look at the lives of the prophets, and you see if anybody gave a damn. Well, yeah, Jerusalem, well, Jerusalem, thou who well, stonest and killeth the prophet. How often would I gather you together as a he and gather her chicks, but you wouldn't let me. They didn't give a dang on scratch crap about no prophet. Matter of fact, they were stoning them and they was killing them. You going to tell me that we prophets and priests and coheens and instructors in Israel and we can't stand nobody to disagree with us, nobody to talk about us, no nothing when they were stoning and killing the prophets? Uh, Y'all ain't got me fooled. Well, well, got me hey, fooled. Yep. Elder, he asked that question because he didn't understand the conversation of two men. If he understood, he wouldn't have asked. It's a, some, some things that are understood, you don't need to ask no question. So when I say, you know what I'm saying, uh, training up my child, you know, of course he has to use me to be that. I got to first be in my kid's life, you know what I'm saying, for me to train my kid. First and foremost, but I, I can only be train right. my kids through... I can only train my kids through the spirit of the most high. I know that. That's understood. You got to be right. You got to you got to be getting trained. See, exactly. that's what I'm talking about. We have to be trained ourselves because we ain't True. never been trained. Exactly. We ain't never True. been trained. No. We ain't never been trained. And so no. when men when men start dealing with the brother or the older man start dealing with the younger man, you know, it's an uncomfortable feeling. I don't like yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? I've been dealing with some of my brothers. It's all right for us to laugh. It's all right for us to joke. It's all right for us to have fun. But don't let that make you forget who I am and how I came into your life. So there was some times that I had to hit, hit the brothers with what's real, just coming from a standpoint from an older man. I have a God-given right and a God-given uh, appointed uh, ability to be an instructor of the younger men and teach the younger men how they supposed to conduct themselves. I didn't. I, that ain't something that I'm just. Uh, that ain't something I'm reading the book to do. That's something yeah. that the most I said that the older man was supposed to do. In regardless, yeah. that's my responsibility. Yeah. You know, 
but we have some of the brothers that they are not able to receive that because they have not been trained by men, that have been trained by their mothers, and that have True. been taught to be moved by those things that they feel when your feelings don't have anything to do with it. Run in there, snatch your feelings out of it, and get your butt back in line. True. True. That's true. And you know, Elder, I think that's I think that's why a lot of um, uh, I think that's why the statistics are as they are. 78% of, you know, um, uh, black women that bring kids into the world, they're bringing them into the world, you know what I'm saying, by themselves. Um, not bringing them by themselves, but they're by themselves. When I had my two kids, after, you know what I'm saying, she had her cesarean, her C-section, I was right there, you know what I'm saying, and when they, when I had my kid, they brought my kid to me. So, you know what I'm saying, when she looked at me, she was able to see the comfort in her eyes, knowing that she was not alone. So now you got 78% of our women who, when they have a baby, they that baby comes out of them, the man is nowhere. There's no comfort, there's no nothing. They got to look, and maybe they got their female friend or whatever the case may be, but they're all alone. That's a bad situation. Yeah, all in yeah, itself. Well, really, well, really that, that's a bad situation. Person. So when you think about, you know what I'm saying, what we deal with as a community, it's really depressing because it's like, where where are what of our what are our thoughts as it pertains to manhood? What it looks like, what it sounds like, what it's supposed to be like. And like you were just saying, we really don't know. We talking about generations of, you know, fathers that went weren't there, grandfathers that weren't there, great grandfathers that weren't there. You know? To the point where now men actually think they're men. <laughs> you think you're a man, but you you think you a man, but you walking around and you mad at a, at another dude about something that happened two years ago. That's a that's a feminine emotion. You gotta let that go. It's like when you playing basketball or whatever. Somebody foul you. Okay, boom, take the foul, keep it pushing. You mean to tell me you can't get past that as a man? To the point that you won't even talk to him. You can't you you see him you you it, 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 like that's not easy. You're breaking character as a man. And I'm from Texas. I'm from this, I'm from the country. Like it, it, it's we too loud to be a passive aggressive. So if you ain't talking to me and I know you, what's the problem? Tell me, we can fix this. If we gotta fight, I'd rather fight you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, us get it out the way, and like you were saying, us you know make it make amends instead of walking around holding something against you, because that feels like a female trait. Because it is a female trait. But that's what a lot of our men are doing. Yep. Yeah, man. And uh, and uh, my thing is like like so. So the only way that we can learn to be God men is by being obedient to God's word. True. So I'm not going to tell nobody nothing that I myself ain't going to live by. I ain't going to attempt to live by. I have people say things to me all the time. That the many people don't agree with me about many things. Many people call True. me a false prophet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> some people just cuss me out with street language. Some One dude told me, go play in the street. There's a whole lot of things that take place, you know, but this is the most highest work. Yeah. We have to be numb to the things that can happen to us from, hey. from the standpoint of our brothers. Because if we not, if we're not, then it causes us to have an irreconcilable difference. And that's why so many of the brothers, they killing each other in the street like that. They hate each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's not true. That's not a manly thing. That's a no. feminine thing. And exactly. Then we have, what we have is we have brothers that get that get come into truth from the street and then they gravitate over from the street into truth but they never had a mind change true you see? true and so yeah. even though you in truth now you still operate according to the same femininity so yeah. i want to uh, you know we want to use these scriptures because these scriptures gonna help men to overlook things to put them in the most highest hand sometimes yeah. you know what you can literally want to go and knock somebody's teeth out. Yeah. But the most high is saying, you know, you're being controlled by the flesh. Yeah. You got to get it up. You got to walk by, you got to walk by faith. You got to put your fist yeah. back in your pocket. Sometimes that's hard to do. But when you can put your fist in your pocket, 
Now you can see what the Most High going to do as a means of rewarding you for obedience. And that increases our faith. So I'm not saying that it's no easy thing. And we're not down in our no. brothers. Just trying to no. show our brothers, help our brothers to understand that when it comes to disagreements and arguments and irreconcilable differences, you have to man up because yeah. we're brothers. You're going to need that brother on the battlefield one day. Yeah. See? So yeah. we're using these scriptures as a means to to challenge our brothers on some of the things that we need. Now, we recap them. We already didn't see that if you offering the Father anything, I don't care who you are. Pastor, Cohen, elder, bishop, priest, camp leader, church leader, Christian pastor. I don't care who you are. If you offer the most high anything and the spirit reminds you, hey, you got a, you got your brother out there that y'all ain't getting along. Your brother's over there. Whatever it is, I don't care who. The most high, I don't care whose fault it is. Yeah, I mean the same thing for both of them. Yeah, you don't mean yeah. see which one of you. Since yet, since we, since we always have a problem, we're trying to see who can take each other the far. Let's see which one of you can break your neck to the phone and apologize and forgive and love first. Let's see, exactly. man of God. Exactly. Let's true. We show you where your man of God is. Yeah. To show you where your men of God is, because it's not gonna change if you yeah. remember that you got arts with your brothers, that you got irreconcilable differences. You are to leave your gifts at the altar. Yeah. Go reconcile your differences. And we're yeah. not saying that you got to be buddy buddy and best yeah. of friends. No. But the most I know when when it's been reconciled, he yeah. know that. So we already established that fact right there. The first scripture that we went over, what was the first one that we went over, Twit? Uh, no, that was, was that the first one? That was the first one. Or was it? I think, Didn't I'm we understand sure. we went over the strong meat? Yeah. See, so, yeah. see my brothers out here got all this information. They think that they something. They ain't nothing. No. They think they something. He yeah. that think he's something, he ain't nothing. He yeah. ain't nothing. He, don't, he that think he knows something, don't know nothing that he should. Because strong meat belongs to the one who by reason, he been using the word. He ain't just been talking about it. He ain't just True. been teaching it. He been using the word in his own life long enough to allow yeah. his fleshly senses to yeah. be overwritten by his spiritual senses. His fleshly That's senses true. don't even stand a chance at controlling him. Yeah. But to our brothers out there, they got all that information. They think they something. And you go by and blow on them and they fall all apart. Nah, you ain't going yeah. nowhere with and, that, and, and Elder, that's why uh, James says, uh, first, uh, James says, knowing this, that the trying of our faith work in patience, he's going to try you in the areas where you need to be tried. So if you got a problem with your emotions as a man and he's trying to use you to, you know what I'm saying, be whatever it is he needs you to be, well, he's going to make sure, you know what I'm saying, he tests you in the areas of your emotions. And how you respond to that is going to, you know what I'm saying, determine whether or not you're ready to be you. Now, you can be out here doing a lot of great things, but he's not necessarily using you. Mm -hmm. You may be going, you may be talking, you may, no, 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 no. I, I, I reiterate, the most I don't use emotional men. For what? For what? Now, he don't need that. He's not an emotional guy. He's the, he's the creator right. of all things. There's nothing weak about him. So as a man who's the head of the household, how you acting, you know what I'm saying, out like, like your wife? How you responding like your wife? How you got emotions like your wife? How things touch you in your heart, prick you in your heart like, like a woman would be pricked in her heart? Sometimes my wife be talking to me about stuff, you know what I'm saying, that's, I'm like, man, that happened years ago. She's like, yeah, I'm like, man, you tripping. You yeah, tripping. It's, 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 like, like it's this funny. It, she, hey, Elder, she tripping, but I understand she can get away with it because she's a woman. Now, if my homeboy, my cousin, or my brother come talk to me about something that happened, you know what I'm saying? Your sound is going out. Can you hear me? Your sound is going down a little bit. It's all the way up. Can you hear me? Because, you know, when you on Messenger, when you on Messenger, the person on the other camera, they volume always is a little low. So you uh, have to. Can you hear me yeah. now? 
Can you hear yeah, me? We're gonna have to put some. We're gonna have to put some holler in your voice. Hey, hey, can you hear me? <laughs> hey, you heard me right there. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, you good. You good. No, so, so I was just saying, like, you know, um, if, if my brother, you know, what I'm saying, or some man or my friend, they come talking to me about something that happened years ago, I'm gonna be like, man, you acting like a straight up uh, a woman. You know, we call that. You know, what I'm saying, you acting like old bitch. You know, like you can't do that. Years ago, and bro, you still holding on to this? Come on. You, right. We don't operate right. like that. It's not even no, a man. But, it's not even yeah. a man cold. It's just you a man. Simple as that. Yeah, that ain't no good right there. That ain't no good. Look, look at all. Uh, get Matthew six fifteen. Matthew six fifteen, but it, but come on, you, Timothy Warren, you going there again, Timothy Warren? Are you going there again? Come on, man, come on, you okay. supposed you man up, man, man up. You supposed to be on here trying to learn how to serve the Most High. <laughs> come on now, come on now, brother. But right, if what you, you got, twit? But if ye forgive, if ye, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive. Your trespasses. Could you hear me? Yep. Yeah, Timothy need... Warren is on one again. I'm just gonna chop. I'm gonna chop you, brother, up to just uh allowing uh. You know, no. Nah. Come on, brothers. Y'all got to keep it in perspective. That's what we're talking about. You see, with the way that you see the way that our brothers and sisters conduct themselves, they still conduct themselves with the same type of hatred. Same type of hatred. Well, hey, Elder, that's what Paul said. That's when what Paul when said. it's an easy thing just to not say anything. Exactly. You see, you know, you see, that's what the most high calling you to, Timothy Warren. That's what we're talking about. Just because you see something don't mean that you have to respond to it. You see? And just because you hear something don't mean that you have to be affected by it. Men don't do that. It ain't affected by every little. Let's get something, man. Let me show you something. Get this tweet where. Get this tweet where. We got to get this. See, that can't rule this spirit. It's like a city with no walls. What scripture you need, Elder? Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. This is the condition of many of our brothers. And most of them are out front and lead. You ready? Yep. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Read it again. Read it loud and strong. He that is he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You see, the city put up walls in order to protect itself and the valuables and the people that was on the inside. Now, one of the things that caused a city to be conquered is when they tore the walls down. If your walls had a breach in them or was tore down, then your enemies can come in and just have their way with you, you see? But the man that don't have no rule over his spirit, he is like a city that don't have any wall. So any little bitty wind blowing by can affect them or impact them, no matter what type of great work he might be doing, anybody can come along and knock him off of his job, knock him off of his square, say one thing, and he falls apart because he is a man that have no rule over his spirit because his senses have not been exercised in the word to discern the things that's coming against him. True. This is the condition of many of our brothers. Yeah. Okay, I'm oh, as yeah. I'm, I'm worried you got in you. You got, to, you got to be able to rule your spirit. If you got that much word and you, you ought to be able to rule your spirit to where things don't bother you. And you turn around and you brothers cussing each other out and calling them MFs and, and, and Bs and, and talking to each other like they like they natural born enemies because they got no rule over their spirit. Now you tell me who what person on the earth don't have no rule over their spirit? Yeah. Read that scripture again. Watch the line of distinction. 
What was that again, Elder? Read that scripture again and watch the line of distinction. No, say it again. I went to another scripture. Proverbs 25, 28. He that had he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a who? city that is broken down and who? without walls. Who? He. 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 And he. other scripture says a man. Yeah. Or he that can't rule his spirit. Because ruling the spirit is only something that men can do. There you go. Women can't rule their spirit because they are naturally controlled by their emotions. Wow. But a man is supposed to rule over his spirit. And he that has no rule over his spirit, he falls into the same category as his wife or as his sister or as his mother. Any little thing that happens can affect them and knock their whole day out. And, and that's why we got 78% of our women having kids, but ain't no man because they don't know how to deal with what they, a decision they made. You made that decision. Now you want to run off. You made that decision. Now you, now you ain't got time. Oh, oh, she tripping now. Oh, child support. Oh, 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 come on now. You made that decision. Now it's the woman's yep. fault. What, what, hey, hey, elder, what did Adam say? It's this woman you gave me. Every, yep. Hey, elder, you remember Heavy D? You remember Heavy, <laughs> you remember Heavy D? Huh? You remember Heavy D? Yep. What you remember that song? He says, "Now that we fell in love, what are we gonna do with it?" What are we gonna do with it? Everybody, men falling in love. What you gonna do with it? Yep. Now you that you found know. it, what you gonna do with it? Because the Most High yeah. holding you accountable. Yeah, you don't even know what to do with it. You ain't grew up yet. You can yep. make a baby, but hey, I'm gonna go. Let me find a scripture real quick, Elder. I'm piggybacking off what you just said. First Corinthians 4 and 20. It says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What was that tweet? I can't hear you. For, uh, I was reading First Corinthians 4 and 20. First Corinthians 4 and 20. Read it loud and strong so I can hear for you. The for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Did you hear me? First Corinthians 420. Yeah, yes, sir. First Corinthians 420. Can you hear me, Elder? Yeah, I can hear you. You just need okay. to talk a little louder because okay. on that hey, hey, message I'm screaming. on the uh, other video is always a little lower. Oh, I'm screaming. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's a good one. That's a, that's a real good one. That's hey, it goes back one. to what you were saying. You know what I'm saying? You got all this word, but no power. Yep, that's a good one. You know? That's a good one. And you know, the precept to that is that I am not ashamed of the gospel yep. of Hamashiach. It mm -hmm. is the power of the Most High to everyone that one. believes. True. To True. The, the, the Israelite first and then unto the Greek. Yep. So wherever the Most High's word is, his power ought to be too. You understand what I'm saying? And that's, that's what true. we're talking yeah. about. So when we start talking about having power, having power to do the Father's will, try this one here on. Okay. 